What's a weird phobia you have? Maybe this isn't too weird, but I'm afraid of not being able to see the bottom of a body of water, whether it's a pool, pond, ocean, or whatever else. If I can fit my body into it but I can't see the bottom, I start getting extremely uncomfortable. I can walk in the ocean just fine, but the second I can't see the bottom due to deepness, or even maybe a wall of seaweed appears, I just have to head back to shore, or at least to a spot where I can clearly see what's below my feet. I own water shoes specifically for ocean and pond swimming, but sometimes even those don't help. Spiders centipede things getting crawlies thinking about it no i never squish spiders my bf relocates them i even tried to join a spiders of underscore page to desensitize and it does not work for me i can barely look at photos slash videos without feeling my skin crawl if my mind somehow gets stuck about thinking about them i have to try my hardest to think of something else the only nightmares i've woke up screaming were about them I dream about gross demon shit too, that stuff doesn't touch me, I'm not even an easily scared person, I love horror movies, love snakes slash bats etc, but like anything with more than 6 legs and I have to calm myself down before I get a panic attack. So I can't find a name for it, but it's specifically swimming pools with nobody in them, ones outside aren't so bad if it's day. But at night it's worse. Then if the light inside them is out it's even worse. Then if it's an inside one, especially at night with no lights. Oh god. Just looking at pictures of those things makes my skin crawl and I start to freak out. My maggot story would really creep you out. A couple of weeks ago I accidentally left a 8 pound bag of frozen chicken wings in my truck for 3 days in 90 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. When I found them the frozen chicken wings had turned into an 8 pound bag of maggots of various sizes on the inside and outside of the bag that they came in. I immediately grabbed the bag to get it out of the vehicle and the grossest part were the fat ones that got caught between my fingers and the bag. They were cold and slimy and a few popped and exploded by being smashed between my skin and the bag. The inside of the bag was literally boiling with maggots. I could actually hear them. The main issue was killing them and cleaning up the mess and it smells like I've had a dead body in my truck. Fear of being wrong. Not wrong like being on the wrong side of an argument or getting the wrong answer on a test, but rather making the wrong life decision or being wrong about my beliefs. Like, what if I'm wrong about my religious, or lack thereof, beliefs, and there really is a hell and I'm getting sent there. Being that kind of wrong always keeps me up at night and ends up stressing me out when making a decision. Oh, and trailer trucks. I hate being next to those things. This is not weird. It is very very common, especially amongst people who have any sort of anxiety and social anxiety. In my early life I was much the same way. At some point the only job that I could find was a phone operator. So despite my feelings of phone anxiety I sucked it up and decided I need a phone specific persona that I held up, which was a fake person. I did this because I needed to get paid. Worked there for about a year and had a couple other call center jobs before I got into my real career. This didn't exactly cure me. I still have anxiety about phone calls, but at least I can put on my phone with strangers persona when I have to call someone or answer a call, and that shields me. After years of doing the above eventually I got to the point that 95% of the time am fine on the phone and only 5% of the time do I have anxiety about it, of course. Individual mood can influence the exact percentages, but 95.5 on average. Sometimes I still get anxiety if it's an important phone call, but most of the time I'm okay and my fake persona and regular self are 100% in sync, along with all forms of anxiety, and in my case especially social anxiety, any one thing that you can do that can go past that anxiety, do it. Do it often. Do it every time you have the opportunity. This will make the harder experiences a little easier. Once anything gets easy enough to do, repeat this process. I have it as well. It's actually much more common than I first thought. It controls my entire life. 
I avoid alcohol and caffeine and limit other foods that are damaging to the digestive system. Some painkillers can be harmful which is a total catch-22. I will deliberately overcook poultry and white fish just to make sure I won't get sick, and I immediately spit out anything that feels hard and sandy. I am still very underweight even for a short guy and I am scared of overeating because I don't want to be sick or even feel like I'll be sick. On top of this, I have ulcerative colitis, <sighs> and a metal phobia, a terrible combination, it messes with you mentally as well. I've developed separation anxiety and generally feel extremely dependent on others, which makes me feel childish and like a burden. I don't go to parties, bars or nightclubs because I don't want to drink or see anyone else throw up. My parents both work in hospitals and complain about hypochondriacs every day and I do not want to become one. But I already am. I've worked with therapists to try to do something about it but I don't have the resilience to face my fear head on and worry I will be stuck with this for life. It's honestly super helpless and depressing writing this. Thank God I'm not a woman who wants children, because emetophobia probably halts many good maternal figures from having biological children in the first place, and I don't blame them at all. I don't even know what it's called. When I was 8 months pregnant I went to a dinner theater. When I went to for every show every year, and three actors were tape dancing on a table and the table was bowing in the middle. Like it's supposed to so it doesn't snap in half. I had a full blown panic attack. That table was going to break and they were going to fall. I can't watch people sit on tables, porch swings, swings in general, those big beds people have hanging from ceilings. I just can't. I panic dot 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 I've had to really push it down at times when my daughter wants to go on a swing. I let her but not if there are a lot of people around. She's almost 12 now. Our beds don't even sit on frames. They sit on box springs and I know that sounds like it looks trashy but we make it work. Half the things people sit on they wouldn't even really get hurt if it fell. No idea what it is. None at all. This is wildly specific, but I have a phobia of people dressed up as Santa Claus. Specifically it has to be a person dressed in a Santa suit. Images, little figurines, even movies are fine. But in person, no. Total meltdown slash anxiety slash get me the fuck out of their mode. I have no idea what sparked this situation, but I always remember having it and my mom confirms I would sob and flail whenever they tried to do them all Santa thing when I was really little. Very large human-like sculptures or statues like the Statue of Liberty, Mount Rushmore and Christ the Redeemer. Read somewhere this comes under megalophobia, SP. But it's only very specific to these type of large things. I can't even look at a picture of the Statue of Liberty or anything human-like and giant. I get hot flushes and my heart races and my brain goes fuzzy. I'm screwed if I ever go to New York. LOL. Another good and weird one is a fear of seeing a place the way you're not supposed to. A good example would be a haunted house with the lights on, or going through an abandoned theme park attraction. Disneyland ones are horrible for this. Or decrepit houses. Something about it terrifies me and I don't know how people handle urban exploring. Balloons are a fucking nightmare. I've been more or less terrified of any sudden and large popping noise my whole life. Fireworks, gunshots, whatever. As I've gotten older, I've more or less been able to get over most of these, and I put it down to the fact that you can predict and expect when a firework is about to go off for example. But balloons are still on a whole other level of a nightmare inducing hellscape in my head. Kids playing with balloons on a bright summer day. Cute innocent fun? No. Horrific display of unbridled chaos waiting to unleash itself. The shaking them all over the place and not knowing they're going to go off but knowing that they will, when they're in that ultra-transparent too tight state of overinflation because you don't know when enough is enough Josh. The big confetti-filled ones that the whole point of them is to pop? Yeah, no, fuck that. Suffice to say, I'm with you now. I'm terrified of trains, being near them, crossing tracks, picking someone up at the station, driving over tracks on an overpass, all of it is nope, nope, nope for me. I can do it, 
but I have to focus hard to keep the paralyzing crippling panic at bay. I have no idea why it happens but I know it has something to do with the train museum my folks took me to when I was a toddler. The first one is water slides. When I was a kid, my mom took me to, I believe, oceans of fun, or something to that effect. It has this giant green water slide there. I had never been on a water slide up until that point, so I thought I would give it a go. And it was the biggest mistake I made as a kid. To begin with, I was flying down that thing fast enough to the point I almost went over the edge of the slide three or four times. It wasn't an enclosed water slide. At some point, my head bounced off of the slide because I somehow managed to get some air time while going down the slide, had a screaming headache by the end. Lastly, when I finally made it to the bottom, I almost drowned. I could have swore when I looked at the depth of the water before climbing up the staircase to the top, it was shallow enough to where I could touch bottom, which was a concern of mine because I didn't know how to swim. For whatever reason, I couldn't touch the bottom of the pool when I shot off the slide. Lifeguard had to rescue me. I feared water slides so much after that that even small ones that are just a straight shot and aren't big at all terrified me. Almost passed out one time because I tried going down another one years later. And I just couldn't do it. Second phobia is a fear of dreams where I fall into the sky. No idea why I have those dreams. But they terrify me. I've had dreams where the world suddenly flips and I'm hanging onto a tree or something, trying to prevent myself from falling into the sky. Third fear is pool covers. The idea of being trapped underneath one doesn't bode well for me. I'm absolutely terrified of hell. The fear of hell is called stygiaphobia. I don't consider it an irrational fear either. My dad pointed out Romans 8, but I kinda can't help but believe I'm actually going to a horrifying hell. And I think catastrophizing the place made my rung in hell very scary. Ever increasing pain for all eternity. The pain always gets worse, and it never ends. Also. I've noticed that the more emotional pain I feel, the more sensitive my nerves get. So the pain will get worse in so many ways. I so truly hope that this is a delusion too. I so hope there's a limit to how much pain human consciousness can perceive. And I hope the same about drama. I so hope there's a limit to drama. One very specific one is overturned boxes. Mostly because I don't want something to pop out at me. I always assume there's something under it that is not meant to be released and not knowing what it could be scares me. Balloons as well because the fact they can pop so easily and I hate loud noises. Also the sound they make when it's rubbed up against anything makes me sick to my stomach for no reason. Mannequins would be one. A very specific one would be like large fiberglass models of animals or characters underwater. I remember seeing an image of an abandoned movie prop of a cartoon shark at the bottom of a lake and if I was swimming in that lake I would freak out knowing it's underneath me. I remember going to a holiday camp swimming pool and seeing a giant smiling fiberglass frog suspended by a cable above one of those funnel sections on a slide and it made me feel so uncomfortable. I think there was also something like that underwater at one part and just the idea of that made my whole body feel cold and numb. My brain just shuts down if I think about the cardiovascular system or the nervous system. Everyone asks, are you scared of blood? Number, I can touch blood and cut up meat and all that but as soon as I think about the function and how it all works internally I start getting a key bombs, I am right now as I write this actually. Shallow breathing and in the case of two first aid courses and a personal training course I have actually passed out in the classroom waking up on the floor with everyone standing over me. It happens as the teacher just keeps talking about the topic I needed to learn and I guess my brain just circuit breaks. Oddly enough, I'm scared of immortality. Something about being trapped on the mortal plane forever just unnerves me to the highest degree. Imagine being trapped under a collapsed pile of rubble, crushed but never dead, laying there with nothing but your thoughts to keep you busy for the next month or so until someone digs you back up. Or maybe if you're unlucky, you don't get found for thousands of years. Imagine accidentally falling into a pit of lava and having your skin seared and peeled off but you never die. 
endlessly sinking to the bottom and burning alive. Imagine getting hit by a truck and feeling your bones turn into shrapnel and lacerate your internal organs, but you're not dead yet. How would you ride and drag yourself to safety when your bones are nothing but a bunch of shattered chunks and you can't move anything? Stuff like this scares me because it's just one slip up. One mistake because I'm careless and in I go for an unfathomably long time to suffer. A single hour of silence is unbearable to me, so I can't imagine how horrible a thousand years of it would be, compounded with unending pain from infinite deaths. But thankfully immortality is nothing but a fantasy concept. In my childhood, I was a part of our local scouts and we were at a summer camp. We weren't older than 13. One night, we had to be a scout for the night. Alone. I was shitting my pants. In front of me there was a really big meadow, with noises of horses in the distance. Behind me, there was a forest with wild boars which I knew because I was growing up in the landside but boy this experience brought the fear of not only them but also agoraphobia, which is the fear of being on an open space with no chance to not be seen. Especially in the dark. Once I had a panic attack because I was going home from a night out and came across a soccer field. Being in a committed relationship, it all stems from growing up with no one attracted to me, and my school tormentors were mainly boys, who constantly judged my appearance, as well, and physically pushed me around, even my main bully hit me in the back of the head, while the teacher was right there, but she didn't do anything, even my mom's ex hated me and I was constantly grounded by him for the tedious things. My older sister's ex-boyfriend said something so rude about me, that infuriated my sister to the point that she demanded that he apologize to me. I am a 30-year-old, F, virgin, who wants to be loved, but the constant rejection and mistreatment growing up and disdain that men give me on a daily basis, has led me to be developed a fear of being with some guy, who do find me attractive, as he will end up judging me and hurting me as well. I don't like the tip of my nose touched or other people touching the tips of their noses. I don't know if it's necessarily a phobia but it bugs me a lot. Sometimes I lose sleep over it if my pillow or blanket is near my nose it'll take me forever to get comfortable. When I was younger, and my friends and family figured this out about me, they would grab a magazine and touch people's noses in it. It used to drive me nuts, but now it doesn't bother me as much. I have a lot of phobias, but I think my weirdest one is subacanophobia. It's the fear of man-made objects submerged in water, and it's basically thalassophobia's not so well-known cousin. TBH it's not that weird, but it's weird because it's really fucking specific. I have no problem with the ocean, and I'm obsessed with deep sea life. Add in a rusty, old sunken ship, submerged car, or submarine, and I'll have a panic attack and I'll drown if I'm next to it. Also it's weird because it came out of nowhere. When I was a kid sunken cruise liners and marine disasters were more or less special interests, and I would spend hours researching different disasters, the mechanisms behind what makes a ship sink usually, and watching videos of ships sinking. And then poof, now I can't even look at a simple sunken ship without freaking the fuck out. Another word one I have is emetophobia one because well, it makes me very conflicted if you can get my drift. Also my fears for this particular phobia shows itself as anger and self-preservation. I can't hear, see or smell someone, not even myself, getting sick real or else I'll get irrationally angry. Then my flight response kicks in and I would want nothing to do with the person until I calm down and that may range from either a few hours to weeks. I don't know if there's any name for this. But one time I was driving kind out out in the country and started driving past a huge blue corrugated steel building, not tall, but sprawling and wide and it just kept going and going in every direction until it took over the land on the right side of the road as far as I could see. I don't know why, but it gave me a panic attack. I had to block my view of the building with my hand until I was finally past it. That has never happened before or since. And I don't know why I had that reaction. 
I don't know if it's a phobia B. C. I looked it up but couldn't find anything. I have recently started to experience really bad anxiety at night laying in bed under the ceiling fan. It's something about the air on my face I think. So, no ceiling fan now which makes it difficult because my husband is very hot natured and we live in the south. It's very strange and unsettling because I literally start to panic. That and tornadoes. I'm deathly afraid of tornadoes. Full blown panic when the weather gets bad. 